Welcome to the CET 2B and MPhil ACE course on computational fluid dynamics. This short course is designed for students who have no prior experience of CFD and the key aim of the course is to make students confident practitioners of CFD that involve single phase laminar and turbulent flows and where these flows may or may not be coupled with heat and mass transport. The purpose of this short introduction is to give you some information about what this course will teach, what experience of using CFD software is designed to give, and how aspects such as assessment and demonstration sessions are going to work. Now, when writing this course, I have tried to balance what I view as the two essential components of becoming a competent CFD practitioner. The first of these components is to understand the CFD workflow and to actually use it to solve problems with a CFD package. The second component is to have sufficient exposure to relevant topics in numerical analysis to understand what the CFD package is doing and what controls that you, the user, have over it. This course is neither going to give you practical exposure to every type of problem that you're likely to encounter, nor will it give you anywhere near enough theory for you to go and write a CFD code on your own. However, I hope I've got the balance right and that you'll find this a useful and interesting course to take. At the time of filming this introduction, there is considerable uncertainty as to what the COVID situation will be in early 2021, hence some operational details that concern this course will be placed on Moodle just before the course starts on the 21st of January. To start with, what I'd like to do is to give you an overview of the topics that are going to be taught in this course. The course is divided into two halves. The first part is what I'm calling the CFD workflow. The aim is to give you a practical guide to using CFD to solve problems. And so the first lecture is going to give you a motivation of when to and when not to use CFD. And also it's going to outline the six steps of the CFD workflow. The next two lectures then look at these six steps of the workflow in more detail, with lecture two looking at the first three steps, which is problem specification, geometry creation and mesh generation, and lecture three looking at the final three steps, which is specifying and solving a problem, viewing your results, and most importantly of all, validating your results. The second part of the course is something that I'm calling taking the lid off the black box. It's very easy to view CFD software as this black box where magic happens at great expense inside. And without a little bit of knowledge, it's very easy to fall into certain traps. And so the aim of the second part of this course is to give you some insight into some numerical methods, some algorithms, and also some insight into some of the challenges associated with solving CFD problems from a numerical standpoint. Lectures four and five are going to talk about linear transport equations. It's going to show you how you discretize linear transport equations and how they can be decomposed into matrix problems. It's going to talk about steady state problems, transient problems, one-dimensional and two-dimensional problems. Lecture six is going to deal with advection and we're going to see how advection can be a difficulty and how advection simulation can lead to errors unless it's correctly done. So we're going to outline some problems with advection and then show you some solutions to those problems. Lecture seven is going to examine the Navier-Stokes equations and it's going to examine how the Navier-Stokes equations are solved numerically. This is a very interesting and very pertinent topic when it comes to CFD and we'll see that there's a great deal of subtlety as to how this is done and it differs greatly from linear transport equations. We're going to conclude in lecture 8 by examining turbulent flow and we're going to look very briefly at how turbulence modelling is used in CFD codes to solve problems and we'll also give you some guidelines as to how to use these turbulence models successfully for your flow simulations. Let's think about assessment. This course is going to use coursework as its entire means of assessment and the type of coursework you're going to do divides into two bits. The first bit consists of three short assessments. These are worth 35% of the total and these assignments look at three different topics. It looks at a steady laminar flow problem, it looks at a steady laminar flow problem that is coupled with heat transfer, and it looks at a turbulent flow problem. 
Now, these three short assignments are designed to give you experience. You can't teach experience. You have to go and sit down and work that bit out for yourself. But what I have done is given you very, very detailed tutorials that you can work through at your own pace to gain experience. Now, selected aspects of each of these assignments need to be submitted on Moodle for standard credit. This standard credit is worth 50% of the assignment total. When I say selected aspects, in each of the tutorials, it will tell you very specifically what it is that you need to hand in. Please do adhere to these specific criteria. Please don't embellish your hand-ins with any additional information that has not been asked for. These are going to be marked very, very quickly, and I expect them to conform to a fairly standard format. Now, the remaining 50% of the credit for each of these short assignments is going to be assessed by a selection of random questions that will be asked you from a database stored on Moodle. And so these will cover understanding and knowledge components of each of the assignments that you've been doing. Now, the second bit of the assignment is going to take form of an extended assignment. Now, this extended assignment is going to be worth 70% of the remaining course total. This is a mini project. It's designed to integrate all aspects of the CFD course together, and it's also designed to be an interesting problem that is of relevance to chemical engineering. Now, the assignment deliverable for this is a report. Your assignment will have what I'm calling a scope of work. That will give you exact details of what should be in that report. You're going to have up to seven weeks to complete this extended assignment and write the report. How long you actually have out of that seven weeks depends on how quickly you can work through these short assignments. They're self-study assignments. They're given out all together and they have deadlines spaced over three weeks. But that doesn't mean to say that you have to hand them in on those deadlines. You can submit substantially before those deadlines to create yourself enough space to give a nice amount of time for the extended assignment. Now, in terms of assignment resources, each of the short assignments has, for accompaniment, a self-contained guide that is intended for self-study. If you work through these guides, you should be able to gain sufficient experience to solve the problems that are being posed. We will also be providing demonstration sessions, and these are designed to give you additional help and additional assistance when it comes to solving not only the short assignments, but also the long assignment. The demonstration sessions are there to assist you with modelling problems that you have, not understanding problems. We expect you to go and research and understand the problem un in your own time. The demonstration sessions are entirely around problems in modelling. Now, the exact details as to how these demonstrations will run are going to be placed on Moodle a little closer to the time because we don't yet know what the COVID situation is going to be in January. It's highly likely, looking at the way infection rates are going at the moment, that these demonstration sessions are going to be held remotely and we're going to be using Microsoft Teams to do that. Just to reiterate, you're expected to work on assignments in your own time and to use demonstration sessions as an opportunity to seek help and to seek assistance if you need it. Here on the board is the schedule of assignments. Now note that every single assignment is handed out at the, at the start of the course on the 21st of January, the three short assignments and the long assignment. The deadlines for the short assignments are for the, over the first three weeks. So assignment one is the 28th of January, assignment two is the 4th of February, assignment three is the 11th of February. As I said before, I would recommend that you don't treat these deadlines as the time you should hand your work in. It is advisable that you work through these short assignments over maybe one or two weeks rather than allowing the whole three weeks, because that will give you a lot longer to work on your extended assignment, which is due on the 17th of March. We will be aiming to give you feedback quickly on each of these short assignments. I've said at the 4th of January, 4th of February, sorry, for assignment one, the 11th of February for assignment two, and the 18th of February for assignment three. In practice, feedback will probably be issued a lot more quickly than that. The deadline in terms of time for each of the assignments is 1500. You should hand your assignments in on Moodle and within 
the context of the short assignments, you won't have access to the next short assignment before you've already completed and handed in the one that goes before it. Now, in terms of software, this course is going to be using ANSYS Fluent as a CFD package of choice. There are many, many different CFD packages out for use, but ANSYS Fluent is widely used in both commercial and industrial research and is one of the most easiest tools to use. Now, in terms of accessing Fluent, there are two options. Fluent is available on all the machines in CEB's PC suite. We're going to be using remote access to allow, give you access to these machines. And there will, again, be details on Moodle as to how to do this. The second option is that you can download a copy of ANSYS yourself. We will be providing you with a copy. And you can use it by on your own machine. Now, we're going to give you details as to what hardware you need to run this in a second. Version 18 of ANSYS that we've got will run on a Windows PC. ANSYS itself doesn't support MacOS, and we ourselves don't have the Linux version of ANSYS version 18. So if your personal computer is a Mac or is Linux-based, you're going to have to go down the remote access route to use Fluent. If you have a Windows PC, however, we will put available for you to download on Moodle a copy of the DVD ISO images for ANSYS version 18. Now, the bare minimum PC specifications you're looking at for this is a PC with about 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit PC with 4 gigabytes of RAM, a 3D graphics card with OpenGL, and 30 to 50 gigabytes of free storage space on your hard drive or your solid-state drive. This is really the bare minimum. You'll get far better performance and a far nicer user environment if you have a more powerful machine. So if you've got a machine that's 64-bit with 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 3D graphics card with over a gigabyte of RAM, and a fast multi-core CPU, then it will be a far more tractable experience for you. Now, in order to use the version of ANSYS that you, we are making available for download, you will need to be logged in to CEB's VPN because the license server that authenticates your copy is placed within that VPN and your version of the software will not work without license server access. So if you haven't already got login details for CEB's VPN, I suggest you do so before the course starts. So that completes the introduction to the course. I hope this is something that you'll find interesting. I hope you consider taking it. And if so, I hope you enjoy the lectures that will be appearing online from the 21st of January.